Share.io for Cinema 4D makes collaborating as streamlined as possible and instantly more fun. So let's get started and have a look at how you can create your first Share.io project. And if you think about it, there are two ways to collaborate on a project. On the one hand, you have your local folder and your own network. And on the other hand, you have this cloud-based workflow where maybe you can share a Dropbox folder with some of your colleagues and work together in that folder. And I've prepared two of those examples. On the one hand, I have this local folder and I prepared this folder structure of a typical project. And on the other hand, we have this Dropbox folder that I shared with some of my friends. So let's dive into cinema and create our first project. So here in Cinema 4D, let's go to the extensions menu and start Share.io. In here I can hit this little plus icon and create our first project. can set up a name and also I can connect my shared folder. But what I like to do is I want to drag directly my Cinema 4D folder in this case into my dialog. And this folder has been automatically set up and I can name my project getting started. And in this case, I want to create a subdirectory for Share.io within my Cinema 4D folder. Hit OK. And you see this folder has been created for us. You can go in and check. And there's this nice structure set up for us. So now we can start by dragging our first items directly into Share.io and share them with our colleagues. And you can drag materials and render settings and objects. And of course, you can export the whole document and the project, including assets. And when exporting those documents and projects, you oftentimes don't want to open the project first. So that's why we've added the support for dragging those files directly into your Share.io project. And this also works for basically any other file type that opens with uh, Cinema 4D. So you can also drag Alembics or FBX directly into your Share.io project. And let's have a look at the file size here real quick. And this is like nearly one gigabyte. And I don't use all those textures that are in here. So if I use Alt and drag this file over here, the whole project, including the assets, will be imported into Share.io. And you see the folder size increased like a lot here, but that's because all those textures are now imported into the Share.io project. And if I have a closer look at the file in the Explorer, I see that all my textures are in here as well. So now let's have a closer look at the interface and our first merge operations. And for that, I want to switch to my kitchen example I prepared earlier. And let's drag our dialog right into our interface here. And on top here, you have these small little toggle buttons where you quickly can toggle on and off all those different options. And you really can make this as tiny as possible, which is of course great if you work on a laptop and really not have much space to work with. But let's give it some room here again. And let's hit right click on this empty kitchen and load that one. In here in the empty kitchen, I want to merge these props and I can go ahead and do that by right clicking on the item and hitting merge. And in here you see those three items have been added to the scene and I can go ahead and delete them for a second and I want to load those electronics and I can either right click on that and hit load or I can choose alt and click on it and directly jump into that file. And in here you see those three objects on the top level of the hierarchy. And if I want to add these three objects right under a given null object, I can go ahead and add this null object to my scene and hit shift merge and those items will be directly inserted right under my current selection. And I also want to show you this shortcut for merge, which is Q. And you can go ahead and hit Q to directly merge these objects into your scene. And let's hit Control Q to add these wall items right after our current selection. 
and also you can let's go ahead and delete these items you can select multiple items and hit Q and directly merge them into your scene which is of course great if you want to quickly merge materials or your different render settings you just go ahead and click Q and you can merge those as quickly as possible. And there's this one special case. Let's say I have textured my wall items here in this scene and I've saved the elements and now I want to merge this object into my current scene and I also have these materials in my document. So I'm going to merge and it will ask me if I want to merge the objects and use the existing materials or do I want to merge my materials from the other scene and you have this this choice that you can use those materials with the same name say yes and there are no duplicate materials merged into your scene so now let's talk about these different filter options and also the move to archive option right in here and for that I want to take this shared Dropbox folder we shared with some of our friends and colleagues earlier and just drag it into my dialog and load this project here. And in here you can see we have a lot of different items and the filter is just like a quick toggle to quickly filter out all those different types of items. And in the view menu you can refresh your overview and toggle your favorites and archive and these are the shortcuts. So you hit R and you can quickly um, reload your current overview. If somebody has exported a new object, you can quickly check and reload. And if you hit F, you can quickly see your favorites. And if you hit A, you can jump into the archive. And the archive is more or less your recycle bin. You can quickly move those items to your archive or you can go ahead and hit delete. But those items will not be deleted right away, they will be sent to the archive first. And from here, you can either restore them from the archive or you can go ahead and delete them permanently. But of course, this step cannot be undone and you really have to make sure that you want to delete those objects. So now let's talk about all these other commands that already ship with ShareIO. And let's start off with this little guy. This is the doc helper. And also you have this little quick commands menu here that you can detach and attach to your layout. But let's go ahead and choose customize commands and you can directly drag and drop these icons into your layout. And in this guy, there are basically different commands to quickly clean up your document or help you in general with some commands in your current scene. So what I like to do here in this document is to colorize all my different objects randomly. And this helps me to visualize all those items a little bit more. And if I hit Alt and click on the menu, you can see you can uncolorize all objects. And of course, if you have some selected elements and choose to select all the children as well, you can just colorize those. So this is pretty handy to quickly uh, give you an idea of the whole scene and randomly colorize all those items. And also another neat command is if you want to quickly get rid of all those objects, you can hide them in the viewport and then just choose delete invisible objects and those objects will be deleted from your scene. Of course, all those steps are um, possible to undo. And if you have any questions about all those different commands, you can always go into your info tab and open the documentation. And in here, you find all those different tools and all the explanation about all those different commands. The PyTools are basically a way to share Python scripts with the users of your current project. And of course, in the kitchen examples, there are no files within my folder, but if we switch to our Dropbox folder we shared with our friends, we can see that there are three Python files in this folder. And we can have a look in this folder with Control or Shift, 
clicking on the icon and then you see there are those three files in here. And let's go ahead and click on the hello world example and you see this command has been run and will show me uh, this message here. And if I quickly want to edit the Python file, I can go in here and hold Alt and it will open the editor of my choice and I can go in and change this here, for example. Hit save and if you run the command, it will say hi from tutorial. So let's go ahead and use one of the other scripts. And this is a free script that I also provide on my GitHub page where you can copy the spline points for Houdini. And let's go ahead and do that. And we see we have this message here that in the new version of Cinema 4D, we are not able to use this print function. So let's quickly edit it, go in here with Alt and let's search for print. And there you see you need those parentheses here. So I will add those, hit save, and let's go back in here, copy spline to points. Spline info has been copied to my clipboard. Let's jump into Houdini for a second and paste these points directly into my curve node. And there you have the spline information. So you see, this is really a nice way to um, quickly share different scripts with the users of one project. The recent files command lets you search for files based on their file extension. So let's go ahead and click on the icon and we see we have to select a valid directory for it. So let's go ahead and jump to our example project and drag in the whole folder here. So now if we go ahead and run the command, we see this FBX listed and we can directly merge that into our scene. And then we can go ahead and maybe run the clean document command from our doc helper to quickly clean up the document. But let's look at a rather complex example here. So in here I have this animated shoe and I did a simulation of those bubbles colliding with the shoe in Houdini and I want to bring back this Alembic into Cinema 4D. So let's create a new version of it and let's have a look at the path. And this is somewhere in our example project down the line. And I just go ahead and save that to disk. And after a little bit of cooking in back in Cinema 4D, I can run the command and automatically see my new version. And I can go ahead and directly merge that into my document. Now I just have to set the scale to 100 and I'm good to go. So let's throw on some materials and give this a quick render. So you see this recent files command really comes in handy if you don't want to dig through your whole folder in the Finder or Explorer and really want to find only those file extensions. And of course you can change those extensions and also change how many files will be shown in the menu. And for the Cinema 4D files, they will be automatically loaded in Cinema 4D and not merged. And of course you can also go ahead and search for images and these images will be automatically shown in your standard viewer. So yeah, that's it. Feel free to have a look at the documentation if there are any questions left and of course feel free to reach out anytime. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.